Hi everyone, Steve Elliott here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing this painting, or a painting of this photo I should say. I'm going to do a watercolour in Art Rage 5. And I'm going to get straight into it because I've got a fair bit of drawing to do. And I um, don't want to be stand, spend too long working on the drawings. I'm just going to tweak my screen a little bit. Get everything so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Lovely. Right. Uh, well, I say lovely. I've lost art rage. There we go. So as I say, uh, I'm just going to wade straight straight into it. <laughs> Well, that was a bit disorganized i've got to say uh, sorry about that anyway as i say i'm going to do um a watercolor of a small stream but i need to do some pencil work to um give me an idea where i'm going with this because it is a watercolor and when i do watercolors i like to uh, have some pencil work to work with so i'm just going to begin by sketching in some rocks really sort of faint lines nothing too too heavy i don't want this to overpower what i'm going to be painting i was toying with the idea of using um corel painter for this one and i had a little play around with it today but it just kept crashing on me i thought i don't want it i don't want it to be crashing on a live stream that would be uh dire that would be almost as bad as me um, clicking on the wrong buttons. See, we've got a few people online. So hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Good to see you. I've uh, already loaded up my uh, brushes. So I'm using a toolbox that I've set up with watercolour brushes, a pencil and an eraser so I've got everything I need for this just want to sort of, and I'm going to change the composition of this quite considerably if I show you um, the photo again if we look at that, we've got this sort of tree way over here uh, to the left and, and all this space. And I'm going to move the tree over a lot closer to the stream and get rid of some of this space and sort of just swap everything around a little bit. So that, that's my plan. Uh, I did toy wonder whether this is a, a, a good subject to be doing as a live stream. Lots of water, flowing water. But we'll see. Hopefully it'll be okay. So I'm drawing some water now, sort of tumbling off this rock. And I've got this other wet rock down here. It like that and then this water sort of cascades over there and sort of away like that off the page so that's my first little bit of water sort of flowing over this rock here although I haven't actually drawn the rock in properly yet so it will be a bit difficult to tell where I'm going with this it is a bit of a tricky subject, I suppose. But I'm up for it. Right. So that is that rock. And I've got another rock on top of that. 
looks a bit like that. I think the best way to do this is just to sort of rough in sort of geometric shapes and then fine tune them a little bit later. It's been a long while since I've done anything like this. We've got some more water here. Another level of water. Gotta make sure that that stays flat. Little pool of water here. Bit more spilling down here. It all looks a bit, I don't know. Uh, no, like nowhere at the minute. It's, it's um, a bit odd to be looking at, I suppose. But trust me, trust me, it will come. To, it will come together. I promise. Got a rock coming down here. And then this is the bank here. So this bank sort of has got a rock like that. Like that. And then we've got one here. So this this bit's the bank. And then I can move my tree now. So I want that kind of here, I guess. I'm itching to get on with the painting, to be honest. But I really kind of need to get the detail in. Well, when I say detail. I don't. I don't go crazy with the detail. Little bit of a. A root there. Another rock just sort of there like that. Jutting out. A few leaves. It's coming on. It's coming on. I've got to kind of remember where I am with all these rock shapes. It can get a bit Um, it can get lost quite easy. I don't know why I've got my <laughs> my Cintiq's like about a yard away from me. I'm stretching out like this to draw. That's better. It's because I was drawing on my iPad earlier and uh, I hadn't moved the Cintiq back into where I could work on it properly. There we go. I'm not worried too much about these twigs and things. I can get them in in a bit. We've got this sort of grass stuff, a bit of grass going off. Like that. Yep, yeah, I'm fairly happy with that now. So we've got this, uh, that's a rock there with a bit more water just flowing up there like that. That flows out like that as well. Straight down there. All this water's kind of flowing at different levels. And it all sort of disappears. All right, we've got a rock here. So under that rock, the water can 
come around there go over that If I was doing this in oils, I'll, I, there's no way I would be doing any drawing. I just wade straight in with the paint, and uh, I can't do that with the watercolor. I need, I need something there. And then the ground just sort of goes up like that, really. And then we've got a few rocks like that. And I'll probably put them in really faint. So that's me drawing. Um, it doesn't look much yet. I know, I know, but uh, I think it will be alright with that. I'm going to lock that, um, so I can't do anything to it. Create a new layer, and now the fun bit. Now we get into the painting. So. Uh, I like to begin with the um let's see the unclean brush i reckon i think that's the one i like i'm gonna go i'm gonna try that and i'm gonna go with a uh blue color fairly big brush hmm, maybe 300 percent see what this looks like oh wrong brush that's not the one I want uh, I don't remember what I use let's try delicate on dry what's that look like no I'll tell you what I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the unclean brush I'm going to make it 300% undo what I've just done but again that's it it is the brush I wanted I knew it would be and I am just getting a wash over the whole thing really uh, a blue wash and I'm sort of adjusting the uh, color so we got it lighter and then more blue and then what i will do i'll use this harsh chaos brush to uh, soften off edges and give it that watercolor look like that Lost my image. There we are. The photo is actually brown, but I'm changing it up a bit. I'm just in this color all the time. And I'm looking where these rocks are. Kind of put in there. And that land that sort of goes down like that. Just gonna paint around the water a little bit. use that uh, in fact I'm going to go in with a ochre color maybe a bit more yellow this is just an initial wash to get over the whole of the the painting so I'm not you know it looks a bit pale but that's how you you do watercolors you, you put on a very thin wash and then build up to that, add more colour. 
I've got that harsh chaos brush again and I can blend these colors together as look as though they have sort of merged run together on the paper you see Corel Painter does this all automatic for you but the problem is it is using up so much of your, your PC's resources you're sitting there waiting for it to do it and I've got a reasonably fast PC I, I suppose it's not um, it's not lightning fast but it's not uh, um, you know a rubbish PC You've got 16 gig of RAM and don't ask me what the processor is things like that I don't I'm not into that you know I don't go there so the delicate on dry is the brush that i'm using i can't believe i've forgotten sort of forgotten that in a week i just have to type in the size of the brushes i like to go much bigger than the 100 percent that you can that is the one thing wrong with uh, that i find annoying with art rage that i can't make brushes bigger than 100 percent um without typing it in or putting my finger on the square bracket which kind of takes forever but I just wish I could just sort of slide it up this is the foreground and all merge into that There we go, and uh, back to some blue again. I'm just painting these edges of these stones in because then I can take the uh, blending brush or palette knife, the harsh, harsh, not harsh, harsh chaos brush, and just soften that off look like that. Gives this nice soft edge to it. There we go. That's all right. Right. What to do now? I'm still on on one layer, but I do when I'm painting watercolors, I do uh, use lots of layers, so. I just want to sort of get this primary wash on. The nice thing now is now I'm, I'm painting a little bit smaller. I don't have to keep worrying too much about the size of the brush. Just gonna let them blend away to nothing. The background is will be pretty much finished really really quick not a not a lot to, uh, to do to that really i'm just sort of all these rocks that i'm putting in i'll leave like little bits of white where the light's catching them and i'm i'm not even anything like close to the photograph the detail I've just sort of made it up there 
go. So I think I'll just do a few of the rocks again with a, a, a bluey color, I suppose. Or maybe no, I'll go in with this, this sort of brown color. So we've got a rock here. Oh, I keep forgetting to change back to the right brush. And kind of it blends away like that, and then back to the brush again. The delicate on dry, and then I can paint the side in. underneath it I'm just gonna go for a bit of blue blue gray and then this water sort of flows a bit like that and I can use the harsh chaos soften that off a bit the uh, delicate brush I just put a bit of a more of a sort of a chiseled edge on the end of that it is a rock after all you see I got my first rock painted in there now so I'm getting there in fact I'm just gonna a bit of an highlight Blend that away. There we go. That's better. So, what am I doing now? Right now, this kind of shape comes up here. So, what I'm doing, I'm painting in shadows around these rocks is what I'm doing really I think I'm going to use that eraser so I can make it much smaller yeah, that's better. And just leave some of that colour out. Now, if I was doing this with watercolour, I would wet that with a brush and then just press a bit of tissue on it to lift it out. So, you know, it's just the same really as, as doing conventional watercolour. Just seeing if uh, we've got anybody on the chat. I can't see anybody. Using the mouse. Let's have a quick look. Oh, people have been saying hi and I've not said hello. Sorry, guys. I watch it. How are you doing? I can see it now. Uh, I got it covered up. How are you doing? All right. I know Lou. Uh, don't worry that you've arrived late. I haven't done a lot yet. I am using a PC today and uh, working in ArtRage 5. Yeah, and I'm on a Cintiq 16, indeed. 
Sorry for not saying hello. How oh, very rude of me. Let's say something now. Hi everyone. Good to see you. There. So I'll follow it now. Sorry about that. I thought it was quiet. It's not a lot of fun when you're on your own, you know. Anyway. Stop winching steam and get on with the painting. So this white area, that's the water running down. And this is water running as well. But it's kind of more in shadow. See? that off there this is quite awkward though I've got this set up I see it I can see it but anyway, um, then I've got a little bit of a rock here. I think I might need to um, start on another layer in a minute. This kind of over there like that. Whoops. And then it sort of just goes off and disappears. Just blends away. I'm just going to use that blending brush again just to I'm still working on a very 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 pale palette at the minute this is going to be much darker just refreshing my screen now a little bit so um I suppose now I can start sampling colours off the, the screen, which will make it a little bit easier for a minute or two. I'm just working out where the water's going. So I, I suppose what I'm doing at the minute, I'm creating the form and adding the shapes. I do like Art Rage, Art Rage for watercolour and for oils. Um, as I say, I was playing around with, with Corel Painter today and it must have crashed on me six times in half an hour. Just because it was, I don't, well, I don't know what it was, but it was not a, a nice experience. It's been a long while since I've done anything like this. I've been to, uh, I was at Buxton at the weekend and uh, with uh, Kerry uh, and uh, my partner and 
we saw uh, Seth Lightman, a kind of multi-instrumentalist rock folk musician at uh, Buxton Opera House. And it was an absolutely awesome venue, sort of very Victorian. And then we went walking and stuff, and I've got loads and loads and loads of um, film and photographs and stuff to uh, use in paintings and things. So I'm really looking forward to that. I've got so much material to keep me going for weeks, really. And a lot of it was in the hills uh, and in some woodland. So, um, lots and lots of landscapes coming up. And I, I was wondering about doing uh, one of, of Seth Lakeman as well and his band. They've got a, a, an awesome double bass player because I've just acquired a double bass. So, obviously, I was really interested in what he was doing on that. can't do much on it yet I can kind of play a 12 bar the sort of a boogie woogie beat and that kind of thing but nothing nothing too difficult see these rocks now they are taking shape It's just occurred to me that uh, I haven't saved this yet, so I should be saving it right now. Now I've thought about it, but I'm just blending this away first. Crazy, I know, considering it's been crashing on me today. Let's save it. Whew. So I've pretty much only used two colours so far with this. I've used, I guess, what would be an ultramarine blue and a, a very thin down burnt sienna. And that is kind of it so far. But I don't think it... it um... I think that's fine for where we're at. I do, uh, watercolours for me are really, really different experience to oils. I do it very different. I'm much more thoughtful where I put each stroke. feel really bad about not uh, saying hello to everybody at the beginning and uh, missing all your conversations. I hope, I hope nobody hasn't left because of that. That would be really a real shame. I think I'm ready for a new layer now. I really do. So hopefully you can see what's happening with regards to the rocks taking shape. I'll show you the photo um, 
again there it is look so you can see i've got the rocks coming in with the water and um the tree i've moved over a lot and the rocks ch have changed them around quite considerably to the photo just to suit the composition of my painting really and the colors are quite different too so anyway let's get back into it new layer then i'm gonna lock that one so i can't go back into it what am i gonna do now uh You know what? I'm going to um, kind of finish off this background. I'm changing my brush about 200%. And I'm just going to do something really, really simple. Oh, changed the wrong brush. God damn it. This looks weird, but uh, trust me, it will work. Use the blending brush way. There we go. So this is the equivalent of just running a brush with water. Up the edge of your paint uh, I think I need to just sort of strengthen it up a little bit Oh, this would be like a light red colour, I guess. Let's go for more of a burnt sienna. So I was sort of doing the bracken and the leaves and things. And then I use this Osh Chaos Blender. Just sort of soften it all away. There we go. I think I like that. I'm not sure. So I'm doing all this sort of distant ground, really. Working my way forward. This is what my plan is. And then I'm going to use that same color again. I'm going to do a little bit of negative painting. Mix a bit of blue in with it.
Turn that away. I know you have to do a lot of kind of blending with art rage and stuff, but I I don't think it's a million miles away from uh using real paint. I really don't. Clean that edge up a little bit. I can also lift out color. And this is, you know, you can do this with real paint. Uh, let's introduce a little bit of sort of no I'm going to stick with the blue I can see this being sort of almost a very limited palette painting just done with a couple of colours There we go. Putting shadow underneath some rocks. Um, also putting in a few little rocks there, look. So I'm sort of inventing detail as I'm going always using that blend a lot I bet I could pretty much do the old painting with just these two brushes Uh, a little bit of detail in there. You know, I need to bring in a little bit of not purple, but definitely a very warm blue. That's it, that's what I've been looking for. Brush size down a bit. Excuse me, erase it a little bit just to put a few. The water's crashing down a little bit. That's it. Use little sort of splashes of water in using this purpley color now well blue warm blue definitely making this up I've got no idea where I am on the photo I 
Oh, I see. Um, Yeah. It's come splashing down here. And then we get this white and a white foam. The eraser just tap that out a bit. And just soften this up a little bit. I even use the razor again just to clean that up. It's got a bit dirty. That's it. So this is going to be a slow job. I'm not going to finish this like I did last week. I did a, I think it was an hour and a half. It took me from start to finish on a painting. I think this one's going to be a little bit longer than that. But that's cool. I don't mind. There we go. I find it really difficult to talk uh, when I'm painting. It's a real, real struggle. Well, if you've got all night long, watch it. That's cool. I'm just going to keep going until uh, I think it's finished, which could be quite a while away I'm going to do some negative painting now and what I mean by that is I'm going to use the eraser to lift out color to add some more water sort of coming down here and because of the uh, layer underneath with color in it's got sort of a it's in the shade So I think what I'm going to do is go back to that layer, unlock it, and take that out as well, because I do want it a bit lighter. Oh, that's better. And that kind of goes over there like that. So I can now go back to this layer again. Just put that little bit of rock in there. So I've got that rock in and then 
can use my eraser again just to of the water running over that there we go I think to do the water the eraser is the way it's uh, definitely seems to be working for me I've never done a painting like this in um, Art Rage, so it is a bit of a bit of a gamble, a bit of an experiment. But you don't improve, do you? If you don't, if you're not prepared to try new things and risk new things, I don't want to play safe. I used to teach, you know, uh, I used to teach watercolor painting, and I taught it for quite a long time uh five or six years and i honestly felt at the five at the end of the five or six years hi kerry how you doing good to see you at the end of the six years i wasn't any better as a painter uh, at all i hadn't improved at all in five years because i was just um doing the same stuff over and over again uh, so now I um you know, I love doing these demos and things but I don't think you know I could play safe and and everybody say oh check out Steve's channel He's, he he knocks out good paintings every time you know he, he really knows his stuff but it would become really boring for me so I I'd much rather run the gauntlet and take risks all the time and um you know ri totally risk crashing and burning uh and and then i'm going to improve as well so you know it's a i think it's a win-win Having said that, I do kind of pick subjects that I think I can get away with. Oops. Pressing the wrong keys. Let's move that up a bit. Got a rock in there that I need to put in. And um, why is it not? Oh, I need to change the color. There we are. Uh, I, Jim, I don't know why um it's awful on your ipad and not on the laptop i've kind of got it optimized as best as i can and i know when i look back at the stream after the quality's been um you know okay so as so long as it's looking good on your laptop uh ding dong carry on that, that's all I can say really I'm, I can google perhaps tomorrow and see uh, if I can find out if if there's a reason for that I wasn't aware that uh, you know there was uh, an issue good that you're following along though Right, I think I'm almost ready for another layer. I just want to 
but there's sort of water under there. That is um, water there. And that is there. That's cool, and that sort of comes down like that. That's the side of a rock, like that. It's a good job I can talk to myself. Um, it keeps the conversation going. I do, I do, I talk like this when I'm on my own, you know, when there's nobody else there. Oh, thanks, Jim. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. So I've got this bit of water to do here. That's sort of coming down over this rock. Bit like that. It is taking shape. I can. You, you do wonder, you know, you do. I do wonder that like, is this going to be a nightmare? Is it going to crash and burn? But I can see it coming now. Sort of getting the mid tones, I suppose, is what we're doing. I love this blending brush. And I'm loving the eraser as well, actually, because that's sort of. Combination of the three, the three tools that I'm using today. Oops, I keep touching that button. I want to keep that white there. That bit should be just white. The water's rushing off there. down into this bit but this is going to be darker right i think oh i need to do something to the tree let's get some let's start warming up these colors a bit well, that's not very warm is it because I'm on the wrong layer. That's better. It was just sort of going into uh, diluted paint. This, by doing this, this is going to force me now to start adding stronger colours. Kind of haven't really thought about what I'm going to do this side of the the tree. I'm going to have to have some rocks. Now the temptation is, of course, is just to blast that in 
in one big blobby uh, amount of red because that's all the tree isn't it and you know that's what you want to do but don't don't do that just sort of be a little bit more reserved and leave leave patches so i'm going to need to uh just sketch in some rocks that would probably be kind of one there and then there could be one sort of there like that Uh, one up there yeah. I'll do for now uh, I'll, I'll sort it <laughs> sort it out later so I think we need a new layer and start the process again I guess I'm just going to um, do something with these trees here I'm going to try and finish them off if I can. I'm going to be using the uh, blending brush in a second. And that will give it the nice curve or the impression of a curved shape to the brush. So I don't think I'll be adding much more to these. Put that blue in. There we go. That looking pretty much finished. Um. This foreground now can be quite dark. So I probably don't want that color. Let's try it, see what it looks like. Actually, that's not bad. But I want to get these these grasses in as well. And I can always flick them in after with the eraser. Of course, the secret is not to uh, use all one color um, Jim yeah I use art rage on the iPad all the time it's uh, one of my favorite apps um, I am a um, featured artist on art rage so if you go on their website you'll see they've done a, a profile on me and whatnot and um i i love art rage um on the ipad i don't use it all the time because i use procreate a lot and i use uh Teosui sketches i like that but if i'm doing anything with oil paint i'll be on and i'm on the ipad i'll be using art rage 
and RH5 on the PC. I really like that. It, this is turning into my favourite app. I really, really, really wanted to be using um, Corel Painter, but it, if it's going to crash on me, I don't want to be doing a live stream and then, you know, I find out that I've got problems with it. So at the minute, I'm sticking with Outrage, although I'm, I think I might do some Critter, some on Critter, because uh, that's a free app and I've done some nice work on that before. I really like it. But yeah, I'm not moving away from Art Rage. I'll be using that for a long time. And when they uh, release their next version, no doubt I'll be buying a copy of that. I do, I've done a lot of videos on, on Procreate and I don't know if you know, I've made uh, some brushes for watercolour in Procreate that, that are free to download. You can grab them off my website, which is uh, steveelliotart.co.uk. Follow the link for free stuff. There's lots of stuff on there actually. All right, let's get this eraser out. Make that a bit bigger. Oh, that's too much. I've gone a bit over the top there. It's coming. I feel like it's coming. I need to, um, I'm going to the layer underneath and I'm going to pick a, a green. I want a kind of a, a limey green. Is it going to let me do it? Well, it might do if I choose a brush. Just thought I'd add a little bit of colour into that. Then I can use my Arch Chaos brush. Just blend it in. Because it's on a different layer, look, it's uh, just sort of shows through that nice green colour. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And now I can use that same color. A little bit on there. A little bit of moss stuff happening. A bit of moss action. And I'm going to paint this rock green. Watch it. Are you still there? Did you say that you came from Russia? You're in Russia?
Oh, Germany. Right. Um, what, what's the weather like in Germany? Because um, we've had, where I am in the UK, as you know, we've had no snow this year at all till yesterday. And it snowed, the first time I've seen snow all year. And uh, we, we're coming into spring. I'm just wondering what it was like over there. Oh, so it's snowing there as well. It's, it's not snowing now. It, it, it snowed like for about an hour or something like that. Really very feeble effort, but it, we did get some snow. And uh, that was it. It sort of stopped and uh, went away. So these are the kind of rocks that are covered in moss that I'm doing now. And I'm going to be painting over all of these again, of course, with uh, dark colours. So it's really different to oil painting, you know, where you sort of pretty much es establish uh, the, the tone straight away, or I do, but with this, it's just a, a gradual process of sort of getting your shapes in, getting some colour on, and then finally putting shadows over the top of that, which is what will make it uh, all come to life. Oh, yeah, definitely. A uh, good idea to go out taking pictures. I took a load at the weekend. We didn't get many... Uh, in the snow because we was traveling back from uh, a place called Buxton but I got a few and uh, I've I've got lots of pictures of the uh, Windy Peak district in Derbyshire Just sort of establishing the screen i want i want now i've introduced it into the uh mix i want to sort of make sure that the painting's balanced and i've got it over you know quite a few areas of it I can even put a little bit up there So I think maybe I was going to say another layer, but not, not just yet. I'm just beginning to start into add detail. What is important as well is that you don't use black. Try not to get any black in there if you can help it. Just catching up on the notes, uh, the uh, chat.
Oh yeah, so I've gone from like doing thick paint to to watercolor. <laughs> yeah, but it's so, such a versatile app. You can you can do all of that, and I've I've seen Daniel Ibanez. He's brilliant. Um, he's a really skilled skilled painter. Yeah, he, he kind of went off the scene for a little while. He he stopped posting videos. I guess he was busy. Uh, you know, as a in doing his artwork and stuff but he, i think he's back again now and he really is good really good in fact on i think on my um channel page you know how you can select artists that uh you admire and you know you recommend i think i've got him on there as one of the artists that i uh recommend i was watching him before i i started my channel to be honest uh, the So I'm working on shadows and detail at the same time now, I guess. Can rough the colour in, then use this blending brush just to smooth it out a little bit. Can't believe I'm actually getting them to look like rocks. They didn't look like anything a short while ago. Now, Lou, I got um I bought Art Rage for the Android. Uh I've got it on my my phone, Samsung phone, and it, it's really, really good. But I don't know if they still do it because they said they was gonna take it off the market for a while, but they did a free version. So you know I do like the thick oil paint. There's a free art rage for Android that just does thick oil paint. And um if if it's still on there, I mean, if you bought it, it doesn't matter because you've got all of the brushes. But if you want to try it out, if you haven't got Art Rage yet and you've got an Android device, check out, see if they've got the free one. Uh, because it, it all it does is the oil paint, but it's a, a great little app for free. Oh, and I can I should say if anybody's thinking of buying Art Rage uh for the for the PC, if you was to buy it from my website, um I get a little bit of commission which helps me out a lot. It doesn't cost you any more or anything like that, but it just means I um get a little bit of cash that I can spend on more apps and things. So uh, I'll probably get AppWise. I will probably be buying um, Rebel. Is it Rebel? Yeah, Rebel next. I'm really enjoying doing this, you know. I'm really, really chilling out. I've had a chill weekend though, you know, like I say, I've been to Buxton and whatnot, so um, it's not like I've, I'm stressed or anything. But uh, this is 
a nice way to be spending a Monday night. Right, I think I need to create a new layer. In fact, I suppose I could start to merge some of these down. So I don't get to you you can leave them, it doesn't really matter, but I I tend not to like too many layers. I don't know why. I, I suppose I'll be I'm worried that it's um you know slowing your PC down or something like that. But I needed a, a new layer because uh, I was painting on wet paint and I couldn't get an edge that was dark enough for what I wanted. So I'm sort of going in with these these shadows and things. I wonder if I've got a dry brush. I don't think I have. Just a spot, what does that do? No, not really. I've just seen if I could get something. I might have to um, see if I can make one a brush that is like scraping a dry brush over paint is what what I kind of want to be doing. Uh. That kind of goes over there like that. I've got this other rock below it like that. That's casting a shadow along there. This is uh It's a long job when you're building up the layers slowly. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try something actually. I am gonna um change the blend mode to watercolour. Just to see if it makes it look a little bit more vibrant. I think it did. It does mean I can't really um, merge the layers down after. You can, but the, the kind of... Uh, it does weird effects if you're not careful. So this is sort of... There like that. I love it when it starts to come together and you can see the actual shapes of the rocks appearing. Yeah. Got a few sort of cracks in the rocks like that.
I just want to try and create a little bit of a shadow here behind the water. I suppose I ought to sort of bring this tree up because it's kind of getting neglected and so's the foreground and I want to uh, make sure that all of that gets included. So here we go. Not my brush size up to 100%. And I'm look, just looking at the uh, photograph and at the bark on this tree. And I'm going to try and draw some of that bark in. And the nice thing about this uh, Cintiq and the brush on it is that it, you know it's touch sensitive so if you you really like you can get th thin lines and if you press on hard you get nice thick lines so i've got my brush at 100 percent. i should have said actually i've not said this yet the the canvas size i'm working on is at uh and it's an a3 size um i don't know what that is in inches or anything and i should have written it down i somebody asked me last week and all i can say is it's double a4 so a4 is um 297 mil by 210 mil so a3 will be 4 uh 20 by whatever 297 is double i believe I'm really enjoying these live streams you know i feel like uh I've got, we've got a bit of a community going now because you know it's it's really nice to uh chat with people and, and you know find out what you're doing and, and what apps you're using and stuff because uh, it is a really if you're into painting you'll know it's a really sort of uh, lonely occupation painting uh, it's not like being in a band or you know uh, a musician where you, when you doing your thing people are watching you and hopefully clapping and cheering on it's very secluded and you know you don't see a lot of people so it's nice uh, to do a, a live stream because i've never you know in all my uh, time as a painter i've never had people around uh, to talk to except when i was teaching or when my children uh used to come and watch me they're grown up now though of course but when they used to come and watch and then get their paints out and and join in as well that was fun so yeah it's it's really uh i'm enjoying it way more than i thought i was going to do oh is he i didn't realize well there is a preset because uh, i use it uh watch it says there's a, there's a preset for a3 when you open the app uh, i did but i wasn't sure if i'd set that preset up myself or if it was actually um, in in the app. So it is in the app. Oh, that's cool. Notice I am varying the colour. You know, trying to vary the colour all the time as I'm as I'm drawing. What I need to do now is save it. Can you believe I've only saved it once? 
that could have been it still could be a bit dire i think we're all right no we're, we're safe we're good Whew. time for a cup of tea i think just to take stock of where i'm at and what i'm doing just to think things through a little bit right i'm going to work on this area because i want it to all come along together in one go Sort of having said that I've gone off and, and totally done something different. Uh, about what I want to do with this. I want to kind of get some texture in it to sort of indicate that this is, you know, way in front of the of uh, the other rocks. And by doing sort of drawing in this kind of thing it will help I guess and then I'm going to soften a lot of that out because I'm not overly fond of it all it's all right And the same here. Hi Ari, uh, thanks, for, thanks for that. Uh, it doesn't matter that you didn't keep up because you can always have another go because this, uh, this will be uh, available to watch again and again and again. Uh, so that's cool. And I'll be doing this sort of condensed version as well, which you can sort of speed through the whole thing in like 15, 20 minutes or so if you want. And my dad, um, unfortunately, he's, he's not too bad, I suppose. Uh, he did end up having a stroke and he's pretty much lost his sh short term memory which um, oh my god you wouldn't believe what problems that causes uh, if with no short term memory um, he, he'll like he'll have three dinners in a day because he's, he's doesn't, he can't remember that he's had his dinner so I'll I do his shopping for his food, and he'll ring me up and say I've got I've got no food. Said, what do you mean you've got no food? I've stocked up your fridge two days ago, and he's <laughs> he's eating it all. <laughs> but he's all right. He's not doing too bad. Um, but he's there's just one or two little problems like that that's uh, you know just something we've got to learn to to deal with. I guess. So by working on like more detail in this foreground, you see how it's like um, bringing that forward. Totally making this up.
there's a nice little kind of a knot. I want to get in. There we go. I didn't expect that this would go like this, you know. I didn't think I'd be sort of... It's, it's taken on a, a very different uh, route or journey to what I thought I would be doing. But, you know, that's cool. I'm, I'm liking it. I need some really kind of in your face warm color just here. I think I'll try and do it on the layer below if I can. Yeah, it's just sort of. Just for the leaves, the dry leaves in the, the ground. Again, that helps sort of push it forward. And use my my um, blending brush. You know, I was using Corel Paint. I said earlier, and I was using ten by eight inch canvas, uh, and everything I do is at three hundred DPI. And I swear to God, honestly, uh, just as small as a ten by eight, it was really 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 very laggy it was really disappointing to be honest i was a little bit disappointed i don't know if i've got an issue with my computer or what painting into this now look i'm just sort of lifting out Yeah, I like that. I, I, I'm really glad I painted that, actually, because, you know, he can't do that now. He can't play checkers anymore. And um, Harry just said he liked the painting I did of my dad when when he was playing drafts or checkers in a, in a pub. And it literally took ill the next, within the week. Uh, and he, he, can't, he just can't, he hasn't got the memory, can't remember how to do it anymore unfortunately so i'm really glad i painted that because i've got a nice sort of a nice memory you know right 
let's put some detail in it. It's weird, you know, I've, I was like, for years and years, I've, I've, I've been a watercolour painter and, you know, sort of coloured pencils and pastels and all of that kind of thing and did exhibitions and stuff. And I decided I was going to change to digital. And I, I pretty much haven't. I think I've painted one watercolour since I've changed over in, in all that time. And, I, you know, I'm just loving it. I'm, I'm loving the digital scene so much. I can't see me going back. And, and I've still got all this really cool art materials, you know, tucked away in drawers and that. And I might get it out again one day, I guess. But at the minute, I just don't feel a need to at all. I think you don't have to be scared to, you know, sort of draw in a line and then fade it away next to nothing. Oops, don't know something in there. Then you can always go back in and put it back in again. Just making this up. Right, I think I need some more, some more darks. So I'm on the wrong layer. No wonder I couldn't see what was happening. That's better. I forgot I'd swap the layer for the uh, when I was doing the red. So I'm sort of blocking in some color to throw this rock in, into relief, I suppose. And I can um, maybe just go up with some lighter blues, just patch in some of this water foam. We're going to merge together and the idea is I, I guess that I keep the whites of the uh, foam becomes the white of the paper and everything else should have a wash on it
Yeah, that's uh, I'm feeling that. And then here, this all sort of is flown along this rock. So you don't see so much of the of the foam of the of the uh, water, I should say. Maybe just a little bit in the odd place. Let's lift that out again. Go back in. I'm thinking now that some of the washes that I put on initially need um brightening up a bit so if i go back onto well i think what i'll do i'll um create a new layer below the top layer and just start um i'll give myself a decent sized brush 300 say and just strengthen up some of these colors And then it just the old thing won't look quite so insipid. I can use that blending brush. Soften off the edges. Because I only want the water needs to be uh the high the uh, lightest part of the painting and everything else needs to be uh, needs to have some serious colour on it. So I'm just going to go in and um, beef up some of the colours. And it'll add a bit more colour to the painting as well. How brave can I be though? That's the thing. Quite brave, I guess. It's just like putting another glaze over the top, isn't it, really? Um, I think that's... That's rock there. So that's rock. That. Yeah. Oh, I see. That makes kind of sense. Yeah, that's it.
I've gone back into typing um, the, the size of the brush in again because I want a really big brush. See how that's really lifted up those that the, the uh, white of the water by going in with those colours. Muted colours though, they're not strong in your face stuff. Shadow's coming that way, okay. So when you move stuff around and, and you are changing stuff and you want to add shadows to make it a bit more dramatic, you've got to remember which way the light is going on the rest of the painting. You don't want the shadow. I could have, I wanted a shadow on the tree and there's not one uh, really there. So I've, I've, I've made it up, but if I, I hadn't thought it through, I could have put the shadow on the wrong side um, of the tree, which would have looked, would have been glaringly obvious. I'm liking it now. I'm really getting into this. I could, to be honest with you, when I started, I could have definitely started with stronger colours and saved myself a lot of time. The iPad is great, Jim. It really is. Uh, I use it all the time, absolutely all the time. Um, in fact, today I did a uh, a portrait this morning. Just sat sat on on my uh, settee, and then this afternoon I did a little sketch in Teosu sketches. I did the portrait in Procreate. Uh, in fact, I was following some. I don't know if you've seen proco's youtube channel and i've been looking at his uh, anatomy and uh, how to draw faces videos because I, I do a lot of portraits but i kind of wing it a bit i don't i've never studied portraiture so i just sort of go with the flow and don't really um understand anatomy or anything so i've given myself challenge to actually learn um a little bit more about the uh, theory behind it to make me a better painter you know so i spent the morning doing a, a portrait following proko's um loomis method i don't think he invented it but uh he's got a brilliant tutorial on it Right. I am really so I'm I'm well chuffed for this now, you know. I'm glad I've took the time to build it up really slow. Not rush it. I think we're ready for a, um, 
yeah another layer Let's create another layer. I'm going to make it, I'm going to change the blend mode to watercolor again. Just makes it a bit more vibrant. Uh, if I can find it. There we are, watercolor. And I'm going in for a, I want a sort of a, a warm blue. And I'm really going for it now. These are the strong shadows colors. Uh, right. Um, Zakari has asked me a question. Why? What's the difference between Procreate and Art Rage, and um, why am I using uh, Art Rage for this and not Procreate? And the answer for that, the answer, to the, the answer to the second part of the question, why am I using this and not Procreate? Is I'm using this on a PC so I can stream. I've not really. Uh, worked out a good enough method of streaming off my iPad yet so um, all the streamings off PCs so this is actually Art Rage 5 for the PC not for the iPad so that's why I'm using this Procreate and Art Rage what's the difference um, Procreate's more versatile I would suggest um, Art Rage is designed to simulate traditional paints like oil paints, watercolors, and uh, other mediums like that, uh, pastels, where Procreate, it, it, although it has an, a nice um, oil painting blending engine on it and brush design tool, it doesn't really get that thick paint effect you can get with um, Art Rage at all. But what it does do, it does do a pretty good job of watercolors. And I've already said it today, but you can, I've designed a set of 13 watercolor brushes for Procreate that you can go and download for free from my website. And uh, it does do a really cool job of watercolors. And I think if you was doing sort of uh, comic book work or stuff like that, you'd you'd want Procreate. Although Procreate's not probably not the app, but it would be a better choice than Art Rage uh, for comic book work and and stuff like that. I'm almost tempted to throw these rocks, these few rocks here, way into the shadow. Now it probably be, might be too much.
oops that's water I think it's water yeah that can be water trying to find out I've got that many layers going now there we go yeah go back to the top one I'm into the big brush at the minute just to knock some of these shadows in pretty quick. I don't want to be fiddling. I want to get them in really, really fast. Put a shadow on this tree. Yeah, there we are. I could also imagine a branch sort of coming down there and, you know, casting shadows, which would be quite nice for that foreground. Fill that in a bit. Then just lure it away notice how the colors underneath still there they shine through that's a classic watercolor effect I'm still tempted to go with some more darks. It's all about the contrast. We could say those rocks are um, darker because they're wet, I guess. I am going to put them in shadow. Yeah. That's it. Um, I wonder what harsh lines would do. I've just changed my brush to something called harsh lines, and I'm looking for something that I can use to like be putting um gouache over the top of this, like a little bit of white. Is that going to work? Oh no, I've got this. 
change brush. Uh, let's try. I think it it might this might work. Yeah. So imagine using gouache. If you don't know what gouache is, that's like a thick. It's a watercolor paint, and it's not unlike watercolor, except it's um, opaque. It, it, it will block out colors underneath. So I can now go in and put in highlights with this um, gouache color. So I suppose I need a new layer for this, really. And I can sort of just go in and put in my water. Jim, you should check out, I've done quite a lot of um, videos on watercolor in Procreate, which gives you, which is really, really um, does some nice watercolors. I, I, it's as good as Art Rage. Uh, it's worth looking at just to sort of compare the two. So this is like the gouache that you put in at the end, as I said. Uh, I think this is looking all right, you know. I'm, I'm quite chuffed with this. You know, I've done the old painting and I haven't zoomed in once. Perhaps I should. Um, if you press the tab key in RH5, you can hide, hide the canvas. Oh, sorry, hide the toolbars. Then you can zoom in. I'm not one for zooming in, really. I like to uh, like to, like to kind of work at uh, as you would on a piece of paper because you can't zoom in on a piece of paper, can you? You have to do it at that um, at whatever your sheet of paper is. I like that effect that I've just sort of spotted and put in. Yeah, that's kind of working for me. It's amazing. Sometimes you, you get something and it works straight away. And other times you'll hit on an happy accident, which is what I would call that. Uh, then I just totally stumbled on that and that for me is worked really nice I'm just drawing in the foam of the water
we're getting really close you know really close to the end of this painting um there's a way of getting up i can't remember what it is there's a way of getting a color palette up but i i can't remember what it is uh, so i'm just changing colors a little bit these look a little bit flat and i just want to bring them back to life with my gouache you know what I should probably put a few dark blue ones in there that are kind of underneath in the shadow Yeah, like that. That will do. Whoops. You know what? A little bit of blue in here wouldn't go amiss, really. I'm going to um, change my brush back to the delicate brush again go down a layer because I want to put a bit of this blue under there I guess the shadow would be this side actually but this sort of bark's been um, broken away from the tree That's it. Where do I start really now? It's just a matter of uh, using my harsh lines brush. I'm going back onto that top layer again for my gouache effect. And just working in a bit more bark. I could keep this going for hours, really. But you know you do run the risk of overworking it and I don't want to do that I'm glad you like the live streams, Jim. I'm really enjoying it. So that's cool that other people are too. Uh, Ten artists. Do you mean adjusting the U, contrast, etc., Control J. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. I'm going to press that and see. Oh. No, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. That's interesting. So... Uh, how does this work then? Let's have a little play. Does this do the old painting or just the colour I'm working with or what? This could. Well, lay it a bit, Matt. No. I'm going to cancel that and have a play about with it. TN, if you could tell me what that does. Uh, that would be uh, I'd be interested to know see there's always something in there there's always something that somebody can show you you know 
I thought I'd pretty much nailed this, but obviously I never read manuals though, so clearly not. Right, I'm with my gouache brush. Harsh lines, I should say, is the name of the brush. 31%, uh, that's cool. I was working on a little bit of bark on the tree. Just sort of adding bits of detail, really. I've got a red colour now. A bit like pen and ink, isn't it, really? I could... I don't want to go crazy with that. I think I might leave that there. Um, just need to change this to a blue. Just want to sharpen this edge up a little bit. Yeah. A bit too blue, isn't it? I think my. Uh, blender just soften that off a little bit now I've softened it off too much again and just pass it lift it out with a razor just want to get that back sharp again a little bit Blend that in there a little bit. Um, I'm still feeling like it could do with a bit more colour. Let's get another layer in under there. The see, the thing is with this is I can be as outrageous as I want because I can just delete the layer. Right, okay, uh, TN. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check out your tutorial then to s see what that does because I, I wasn't aware of that. I'm gonna have a, a little play with it. Now I'm gonna move that layer under there. maybe even one more bit right at the bottom yeah and just add a little bit crazy with the color i think oops how many layers have i got here Got quite a few now. There we go, that's better. This is um, getting there. I 
I'm glad I've spent a bit more time on it and uh, just sort of tweaking the colours all the time. They want something. That's it. That's what I needed. Wanted something in the middle there. All looking a bit flat. I do, I have to be careful that I don't end up with a grey painting because I want something that's, you know, got some colour in it. And I want to, I'm doing this now because I want to really make that white pop a bit. I could have a branch coming off here, you know, that sort of uh, cuts into there. I think I might do that, actually. Let's go back to the top. I've got seven layers going off. That's not too bad, I suppose. Uh, I need this on its own layer because if it, if I don't like it, I can get rid of it. So let's um, delicate on dry brush because this is the translucent one. I'm going to whack it up to 100%. I'm going to sample that brown color and I'm just going to kind of go like that. Boom. Yeah. Let's vary the colour a little bit. And that means I don't have to worry about any of that back there now. Go into my Arsh Lines brush because that will give me. I'm going to create another layer. the size of that bit that will give me an opaque brush I can then just sort of blend down a little bit and do we need do you think do we need any leaves just the odd one perhaps I don't know what do you think That now isn't thick enough. That that branch would just break. So I've got to um, sort that out. There we are. That's better. That's kind of better. Do we need another one? Should we go for it? Should we do a double?
kind of like that. This is totally um, made up now. Yeah, a falling leaf, that's a good idea. Oops. One or two on the branches as well, definitely. Um, let's go with sort of... Now, I don't want a branch that looks like, a leaf that looks like this kind of thing. You know, I want it to be um just so that a mark Like that. Where well, we're going to have this fallen leaf here. Yeah. New brown ones as well. I've got to be a bit careful now. I don't want to overdo it. Let's start merging some of these layers down. Um, it's a couple laid down. Uh, Merge down, let's do one more. And then I can create one more new one. But I just want to put some curvature onto that branch. Send it away a bit. You know, where do you start? Where do you start? I'm kind of really into it now. And um, stop looking at the actual uh, photo about an hour and a half ago. I just thought it might be a good idea just to reference it quickly. And uh, just notice this might be quite nice. There was a little twig just sort of coming out of the water there. And there. I mean. 
this waterfall, you know, was only about three foot, three foot long. It was like a little man-made thing uh, in a local park. But it was done really, really well. Yeah, that little twig in there. Like that. That adds a little bit of uh, detail. too much I think we're pretty much there, you know. Yeah, that's not too shabby, is it, really, I suppose? Could have probably done a little bit more over there. There's a nice twig coming out of here, actually. That's just... Uh, sort of like this and then like that whoops Better. And this sort of goes up there like that. Way too dark. Too dark. You know what? I don't like that. That's just too much. Let's get it out. I think the tree's enough, and that and those little branches there, although they could be even lighter, I guess. Yeah. I finished. That's it. I'm just going to sign it. Oh, I don't like that colour. There we go. A little stream. Uh, 
in watercolor in art rage i hope you've enjoyed it guys if you have i will be well first of all if you have big thumbs up will be much appreciated it does help me out a lot and if you want to get in uh, formed of when my next live stream will be or if you want to be reminded of it don't forget to ding the bell it will be next monday at the same time at seven o'clock uh hang on somebody's reading something hi sure how you doing um i'm sorry i've just finished now so a little bit late law uh looks great thanks for another another lovely stream you're very welcome i'm glad you've enjoyed it and uh, i really have so uh thank you so much for joining me and keeping me company uh and i will see you all again next week so bye <laughs>